Coach is Rick Stowe of All Access Coaching. I'm really excited to bring you this free video and make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data as far as what coaches want. And also, if, you can, if I can get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll start doing weekly YouTube clinics for free. And if you hit the like and subscribe button, you'll get notified when we upload new content. We're uploading three or four videos every week. Coaches, this is a really critical part of how we install things and have our players get a great understanding of the plays that we're running or the concepts that we're running in both our intermediate and our deep passes. So the very first thing is that we have to teach our quarterbacks how to recognize and how to understand coverages and how we're going to operate against those coverages. So we implement a very basic system of reads. There's only four different ways that we would read a defense. And all of those reads are tied into the plays that we call. The quarterback uh, eventually learns that each play concept has a specific read that's tied into it. So in our read system, uh, we have a key defender read. And a key defender read, that quarterback is reading one player. And that player is going to determine if the quarterback throws outside of him or inside of him, or in front of him or behind him. Okay, so we have what we would call a horizontal read or a vertical read or a horizontal stretch or vertical stretching that key defender. The second one is a progression read. So a progression read is where your quarterback reads from one to two to three to four to possibly even a fifth guy in the progression. And that is based on a series of checklists where when he's looking at the defense both pre-snap and post-snap, he's eliminating guys that he would go to based on how the defense is playing. Rather than just sitting and looking at routes, he's actually reading the defense in that progression. And then the third one is what we call an object receiver read. An object receiver read is a triangle read. It's telling us where we'd like to start the read out. And then based on how the defense is playing that receiver, we're either going to throw outside of him or inside of him or in front of him or behind him. And then lastly, just like probably everybody does, is we have a matchup matchup route read where we're taking a player and we're matching them up versus a defender. And that's what we would call a solo flight read. Coaches, here's our intermediate and deep concepts. And as you can see, I'm almost embarrassed to say we don't have a lot of intermediate, intermediate concepts that we run. We feel that we're going to take these three concepts and we're going to get really good at them. Now, year in and year out, we tend to, to dabble in some other things, but they don't become a big part of our offense. When you go back and you review your film, take a look at what you're running and how effective are you running it and how much time did you have to spend installing it. It's always a really sad situation when you have a play that you've spent so much time on and you've invested a lot in it and you just don't get mileage out of it during the season. That, that's what we would call an expensive play. We want our plays to be fairly inexpensive in both how we teach and learn them and to give us a really big bang for our buck. So in our intermediate game, we have a spacing concept, we have a drive concept, and I'll get into these, and then we have a choice concept. All of those have um, reads that are built in specific to those plays. And then in our shots in our vertical game, we run four verts. We have a, uh, a tag off of that or a variation off of that where we run verticals with one player running a shallow. We have a smash concept. And, and then off of that, we have a tag where we run a double move where we come back to the post. And then we have a cop, which is corner over post. And we also have a variation that we run off the hash that ties in with one of our quick game routes and looks very similar called the stutter post. And then we also run a double post. And as I mentioned, all of these plays, even though there's not a lot of different things that we're doing, we can do variations and we can build in some tags to give us great concepts. Coaches, you can see that this is our spacing concept. So on one side, we have our spacing concept. On the other side, we have a quick game concept that we've discussed in one of our other courses. On the spacing concept, it's always a three receiver combination. So there's always gonna be one receiver that's running what we call the modified curl, and it's somewhere along the seam. We're always gonna have one player that's running a sit or a spot route, and we're gonna always have one player who's becoming the flat player. So running back coming from the backfield is either gonna run what we call an arrow, or he's gonna run a flat route. And then here's the quick game side. So we will always pair quick game with this, and this is gonna give us, um, anytime we have a key defender read on one side, combined with an object receiver on the other side, becomes a full field read. So on the quick game side, because we're looking at a key defender, we consider both of these as a pair as our first read in the progression. If we don't like our look, 
and we don't feel like we can get a clean shot and get the ball out cleanly, the quarterback's going to reset his feet and then go progression across the field. So he's next going to go to the spot route, he's going to go to the modified curl, and then if he throws the arrow to the running back or the flat, sometimes he's on the move because it's the last in the progression. The big thing is that the quarterback will move his eyes across the field. You'll notice that there's a natural sequence of how he's moving his eyes from left to right and scanning the field and his feet will follow. In this diagram, this is now an example of a three by one formation to the single receiver side. You can add the running back so that you can read a defender if there's somebody in the alley. If there's nobody in the alley, you can just call a single quick game route. In this example, we're using the slant and then to the receive, three receiver side of spacing, somebody's running the spot or sit route, somebody's running the modified curl, and somebody becomes running the flat player. So here's number one running the modified curl, here's number two running the sit, and three runs the flats. And we can exchange responsibilities by adding a simple tag word. So if we add the tag word swap, that tells us we want number one and number two to exchange responsibilities. So if we gave a swap call on this, He's going to run the modified curl, he's going to come underneath and he's going to run the sit. If we call switch, switch tells us we want the two and three receiver to exchange responsibility. So if we call switch on this, he would run the spot, number two becomes the flat player, and number three runs the sit. We will, we will run our drive concept when we're on or near a hash. So again, at the high school level, you're almost always on or near a hash, so it's a great play for us and something that we feel is an all coverage beater. It's a progression read right from the get go and uh, it's a full field read. So there's nothing mirrored in it. We just progress across the board. So the very first receiver, and again, we run this generally out of a two by two formation. We'll dress it up with alignments and things like that, but we're, we're in two by two. So the very first receiver to the field is he's gonna run an outside release fade. He's gonna try to beat the top of the coverage. This is what we would call a gift. If we have a matchup and we can get the ball out, quarterback on his third step, the ball's going to come out. We're not sitting and waiting. So as the quarterback gets the snap from the center and takes his first step, his eyes are going to be out. If we can beat the corner and beat the top off the coverage, we're going to take a shot. Otherwise, number two is going to run a bubble. So one in the progression, two becomes the bubble. Now, we're not necessarily reading routes that we're, that we're running, but we're going to read defenders. So assuming we don't go to number one on the third step, We've, we've eliminated this. Now we're on to number two as we're finishing up, finishing up our footwork in the pocket. If two is not open, it's going to be because this outside linebacker is running down to cover it. So in that case, our eyes are going to come to, to number three in the progression. We call it number two because we're actually able to take a look and eliminate these in, in our checklist if they're going to be open or not by the time we hit our third step. So the, 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 the dry route becomes number two. And then we have a late breaking comeback at 15 yards. It's an inside breaking comeback. And then our last guy in the progression is the running back who's just checking down, spotting up near the sidelines as he's running arrow out of the backfield. By the time we get to number four, if we throw it, the quarterback is probably going to be on the move in the pocket. And then again, this is a full field progression rate for the quarterback. Coaches, you'll see that we're in a two by two formation here, our alignment on one side as we're compressed on one side, we're gonna run spacing up at the top. So we're gonna have one of the receivers who's gonna run a spot route, one of the receivers is gonna run what we would call a modified curl, and then the third receiver being the running back on this, he's gonna run the arrow or he's gonna run the flats. And when we, throw, when we throw this route, this is an object receiver read, and we'd really like to get the ball to that receiver that's running the modified, modified curl. But as I mentioned, in almost all of our packages, we have built-in answers when they bring pressure. So if we get inside linebacker blitzes, we believe that we're going to be able to hit our receiver running that spot route um, in stride as he's attacking the box. You'll notice that both linebackers are walked up, so they're going to bring uh, pressure at the snap. Quarterback takes a three-step drop, and we've got a receiver running free. So although we'd like to throw to him, we have an answer built in if they're bringing inside pressure. I'm going to take a look at it again in slow motion. So as the quarterback sees, um, he doesn't, doesn't sweat it. He knows this is a great opportunity to get the ball out as they bring pressure. 
and we're just playing pitch and catch in this situation. Here's an example of spacing out of three by one. And so again, very simple concept. We're gonna have run, one player running a sit route in the box, one of the players running a modified curl or around the, the area of the hash, and then our third, area, our third receiver going to the flats. The running back, because he's on away from the call on this and he's not part of it, he's gonna stay in, in protection unless we tag him to go out to the single receiver side. Quarterback takes a three-step drop and as you can see with his eyes, he's gonna take his eyes and pull that defender out of there and be able to throw that, that modified curl. I'm gonna show you again. You'll see how that sit route forces that linebacker to honor it and work inside, freeing up the, the player that's running the modified curl. And then the flat player took that outside linebacker out to the flats. Here's another example of spacing out of three by one. And again, we pull that linebacker out of that curl seam area. We get him to drift to the flats and then that opens up that player along the hash. You can see sitting down. Okay, we're pulling a lot, uh, that linebacker out of there with the flats and then we hit him just spotting up, sitting down and then get, get a big first down. Coaches, I really hope you got some great information from that YouTube video. Again, hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data. And if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll do free YouTube clinics. And you also get notified when I'm doing those YouTube clinics and when I upload new content to this channel. Thanks for watching, coaches.